Metal Gear Solid 6 Inner Heaven takes place between Metal Gear Solid 2 Snake's Revenge on the MSX2 and Metal Gear Solid on the PlayStation. The story picks up at Twin Lakes, Alaska, where David Snake, a newly retired mercenary, has withdrawn to a small cabin and a life of seclusion, husky mushing, and a precarious managing of his PTSD, symptoms brought on from a life on the battlefield. Setting-wise, Metal Gear Solid 6 takes place in an open-world sandbox. It's not gigantic, but it's also not small. There is an AI-related reason for this we will touch upon later in the video. Twin Lakes, Alaska, an actual real-life location, lends its name to our somewhat fictional geography. A desolate, windswept, snow-blasted tundra containing David's cabin set in the foreground of the nearby Neocola Mountain. Two miles away, we have the only small town for miles, Bethel, which is best reached by using David's snowmobile or husky sled. Between the cabin and the town is Pronek Forest, home to numerous sub-arctic wildlife, which may be tracked and hunted. Along with these locations, we have many vast snowscapes, forests, outlier cabins, frozen lakes, and rivers. While at the east side of Neocola Mountain, we have the Mafinda II oil field. All of these settings are subject to brisk day and freezing night cycles, as well as alternating weather patterns, which often pull in vicious blizzards or sometimes clear blue days. The player starts, however, in the midst of far different surroundings. That is, a crumbling Zanzibar land prison base. After the press start screen, we find a younger snake, bruised and battered, coming to consciousness. Explosions, gunfire, and crumbling infrastructure boom in the background. Snake checks his sidearm, gets to his feet, and as he starts running and screaming, where are you, the player takes control. Snake is, of course, voiced by none other than David Hayter. This game would reunite David Hayter and Hideo Kojima for the first time since Metal Gear Solid 4. As you move through the devastated base, pipes blow, ceiling debris crushes soldiers, and each dramatic act immerses you in a deep slow motion. Snake is chasing down Big Boss, but this is not exactly the scene we think it is. After an epic chase through a rapidly deteriorating base, the lights go out and suddenly there is silence in the cavernous bunker Snake finds himself in. The emergency generator fires and the blood red backup lights kick in, rendering Snake and his surroundings in high contrast black and crimson. As you attempt to move Snake forward, he falls to his knees, crawls and drops to the floor, all the while soundtracked by a desolate score of scraping metals and distorted feedback. As you press the forward button, Snake sinks through the floor, and the camera pans to the underground to reveal a claustrophobic coffin of frayed cables and rotting bones. As the soundtrack reaches its unsettling peak, Snake wakes up with a shocked scream in his quiet cabin in Alaska. What you were controlling here was his PTSD-induced flashback nightmare. There will be many more of these subconscious missions throughout the game, and how you manage your PTSD throughout the day in Twin Lakes will determine how unsettling, trippy, and difficult these dream missions may be. For example, the more Snake interacts with people from the nearby town and partakes in scenarios that benefit the community, the more control he will have of his dreams, and the more he can turn the tables on his demons. As a huge Metal Gear Solid fan, I always felt that something was missing from the series. The original was my favourite. The character of Solid Snake left a deep mark on me, and after that entry in the series, we'd never really get to play as him again in a full role. We would never get to experience Snake in his prime on a new console. Metal Gear Solid 2 was Raiden-centric, 3 was Big Boss's story, 4 was an old dying Solid Snake, and 5 was set back in the 80s. I long to see more of this soldier's story, especially in the Alaskan setting that was so incredibly atmospheric on the PS1. And here is where our inner heaven really kicks off, in the quiet cabin of David. Here the player can take refuge from the elements, cook food, write in your journal, feed your dogs, listen to the radio for weather updates and late night talk shows, run calisthenics, prepare a hunt, and take calls on your CB radio for mysterious nomads and strangers. Inner Heaven is part survival game, and if you are going to survive the harsh Alaskan winter, you will need supplies. Taking David's snowmobile into the nearby town of Bethel, you can sell pelts, game, purchase traps, ammunition, seeds, clothing, and food. Bethel is a living, breeding town. The reason why the overall map is of a general medium of size is to allocate more game design resources to this town's highly developed NPCs. Here you will find a finite population of real people with names who will get up in the morning, go to work in the day, and interact with each other. Some will drink in the evening at the bar, where you can also imbib, although depending on your standing with the town, you may risk a fight with the local drunk. Should you be viewed favorably, others might invite you back to their homes for dinner or work. David's interactions with the town can afford him benefits like protection if he is in good standing, whereas he will be shunned as an outsider if he causes trouble or rubs the locals the wrong way. This community standing would also serve to stir or partially heal his PTSD. 
And now from setting to story. After the events of Metal Gear 2 Solid Snake, David has resituated to a part of America where he could disappear, and he had his relative peace for a while. That was until Sanner started moving in and out of the oil field at the bottom of Neocola Mountain. Sanner, you may remember, from the oil refinery lab in Africa during Metal Gear Solid 5 The Phantom Pain. Around this time, the locals in the town also start reporting sightings of a large animal in the neighboring woods. Similarly, local husky and wolf populations have started to decline. One of your first missions is to investigate the woods to the east with your rifle and your main husky, D-Wolf, and to gather intel. After chasing some shadows and hearing some distorted howls, David is drawn towards a red light deep in the forest. Tracking footsteps in a trail of blood, the player eventually arrives at the mutilated carcass of a giant brown bear. What could have done this? You'll notice I refer to him as David as opposed to Snake. That is very intentional. David has left war behind, and the aim of this game is to show the real person behind the legend. Townspeople will call him David or Dave. He, in turn, keeps them at a friendly distance and doesn't relay his last name to many. He can interact with locals through trade, a Diderot training, and regular conversing. Another large aspect of this game is contact with nature. Snake can track wild animals, hunt, and transport game on his snowmobile or dog sled. Exploration of the myriad waterfalls, caves, and peaks is essential to David's recovery and well-being. For example, the more connected he feels to people and nature, the less his hands will shake, and the more accurate your shots will be. As a player, you can plan trips from your cabin, pack ropes if you plan on climbing, or bring a tent if you plan to sleep under the stars. Either way, make sure you wrap up and know how to start a fire. When you're not braving the wild, your investigation of events surrounding the town will lead David to the Sanner oil field near Nicola Mountain, where he eventually encounters their unorthodox drilling machine. It should also be noted that similar to Metal Gear Solid V, day or night intrusion carries various benefits and drawbacks. By daytime, the oil field is surrounded by local protesters picketing the commodifying of their local resources. By night, the security firm will be protecting their site. This is where Snake first comes across rail gear. The AI-loaded rail drilling machine, which Sanner has made clear in the public media, is not a weapon. You can catch news broadcasts on your cabin radio or on a TV in town. Over the course of the game, you will hear headlines here and there about a nearby nuclear storage facility in the Fox Archipelago, that is, Shadow Moses. But as this is a Metal Gear game, it is important to remember who controls the media. The Patriot's influence works in mysterious ways, and it follows this retired soldier into the furthest, most isolated regions of Alaska. The flip side of this semi-RPG gameplay is Inner Heaven's inner life, or inner game, David's subconscious. The longest David can go without sleep is three days before he starts hallucinating. Let it go too long and he'll slip further into psychosis, with his surroundings looping and people becoming seemingly threatening. Get on your snowmobile while sleep deprived, and a normally short journey will briefly appear endless, with looping terrain. When you do sleep, you actively take part in the second half of this game. Most sleeps bring with them a fresh new mission which weaves together a storyline that has more to do with current waking life events than anticipated. In these subconscious missions, David is always referred to as Snake. Some missions are scenes from his past, sometimes from a past he doesn't immediately recognize, in the form of carried over big boss memories, and other times these dreams take on a trippier, scarier, more psychological bent. Sometimes there are isolated scenes from the first two Metal Gear games, now rendered in next-gen graphics, and sometimes they are something else altogether. As time goes by, David fights cabin fever by spending time at his CB radio. A mysterious voice of a woman codenamed Mama occasionally reaches out to Snake and seems to know a lot more about his inner and outer life than he could ever have imagined. She seems to know about David's fractured past and unstable future and she beckons him to find that animal in the woods that the townsfolk have been speaking about. Eventually, it comes to pass that Sanner's rail gear is the animal in the woods. It is the animal that has been stalking the community and has been looking for Snake. In a pivotal scene, we see this drilling machine, which he once snuck under while investigating the Sanner base, transform and appear on all fours. This machine is built to look for Snake. Well, that is when it's not drilling for yellow cake, the hazardous ingredient for warhead development you may have heard of in Metal Gear Solid V. Turns out the oil drilling was a massive front and Neocola Mountain is a prime location for Yellow Cake, which will later be sent to Shadow Moses Island for further development. This game has a rich, dense and multi-layered Metal Gear Solid story that weaves together elements from the entire saga with a brand new living world setting. The mama on the CB radio acts as a sort of guide and counselor for David, but is she real or is she an AI construct? How is she linked to Rail Gear? Who sent her? Why is the Sanar company targeting David with this technology? How do David's late night dreams relate to the Patriots, clone memories, and the effects of PTSD? 
How does the man behind the legend live day to day with real people? And finally, why have we never heard about this chapter until now? Tonally, the game sits somewhere between Logan, Into the Wild, Cliffhanger, and White Fang, by way of Gaspar Noyes, Enter the Void. Inner Heaven also contains spectacular epic battle scenes, with railgear leveling forests, mountaintop helicopter brawls, and Snake battling his inner and outer demons, as well as Saturn's ruthless forces. The forest is alive, the town is alive, and Snake is looking for peace. Will you forge a bond with the townsfolk and incur their support in times of need? Will you actively take on Sunner? It's up to you how and when you approach the world of Melgear Solid 6 in your heaven.